Hello friends, wherever you are around the world, a very warm good morning, good afternoon, good evening and this is NRI Samai. Welcome back and as always at another topic that's useful, informative, a topic that has significance and relevance. The Children Manifesto for General Election 2014 and that's what we'd be dealing with today. So let's start with children first. As they say, it's easier to build strong children than to repair the broken men whatever the quote might be, but the truth is, it's easier to build strong children. Now, democracy is about people, institution, and politics. And people do include children as well. So, in a democracy, is there a solid connection between politics and the children who are integral part of the word people? So, let's be a little direct here. Ever heard of Children's Manifesto? At least at a personal level, I have never heard one in my lifetime. But, uh, so, let's, let's talk to uh, 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 today. It's, it's good to be in a conversation with Anand Prasad, a national communications officer from Hamara Bachpan organization, who is an air with us from Bhuvaneshwar. And uh, Hamara Bachpan organization has already spawned Pan India. And uh, it will be a wonderful conversation uh, talking to Anand uh, this, this morning here. So, Anand, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Shukran. Wonderful. So, tell us a little bit about Hamara Bachpan Initiative. And what do you guys do, sir? Uh, basically, Hamara Bachpan is a... We are not an organization, rather it's a national campaign. Uh, in this campaign, we basically advocate uh, for young children living in urban poverty. As you know, India is... a uh, uh, we normally talk about poverty in India, but we normally ignore the urban sector. But uh, these days, uh, uh, more focus is on the urban poverty and the scenario in urbanization and the poverty in it. So basically, in all the processes, we are you know, ignoring children's uh, rights, ignoring children's needs, basically, uh, in urban setup. So we are advocating for a you know better living condition for children uh living in urban poverty in india in major cities and uh, as we know uh, there are issues of health is, uh, health and there are issues of uh, education there are other issues uh, like housing and everything uh, but mostly the living conditions is the grassroots cause which you know uh, affect the li living of young children be it education be it health uh, it adversely affects like if your living condition is bad and as you know, in most of the Indian uh, slums, urban slums, the living condition is the uh, poorest. So uh, we are advocating before the government that uh, in your development policies, what you have for the urban uh, 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 people, what you have for the cities, you should include all the children who are living in the uh, slums, who are living under poverty in urban setup. So we are basically advocating. We want a policy change because you know, like no NGO, no other organization can bring any change unless otherwise there is government intervention and uh, you know government funding, uh, government initiative for uh, for this cause. Exactly, so, and uh, we are and focusing in major Indian cities and uh, where you know we can uh, make visible the issue of children in a better way. Fair point, because as I mentioned earlier, democracy is about people, institution, and politics. And without politics yes. and policy makers yes. do, and the lawmakers take up the right initiatives and, and create the right laws, and uh, there's, there's nothing that would uh, uh, actually have an impact unless we, uh, NGOs, charities, all of this has, has a minimalistic impact, but we want to broaden this, this, this uh, whole spectrum of things. We definitely would need politics to come into picture. Let me ask you this, Anand. What do children, young or the little ones, you know, want from their elected leaders? Or let me rephrase this a little bit. Do our elected leaders have a plan for children of our country? What do you think? Uh, 
uh, this is again sad to say, but uh, you know, uh, in most of the electoral process, if you talk about the urban slums, like I'll basically talk about the urban slums and the children manifesto for what we have done. So, uh, if you talk about the you know, urban uh, areas, the elected representatives or those who are nominating or those who are filing nom nominations, uh, normally in the process they involve children in, you know, starting from uh, posting the posters uh, in other work, children are engaged. But in a broader perspective, if you look at the, their agenda, their plans, nowhere children are mentioned just because they don't have voting rights. Mm. And uh, uh, if you say about all other parties and different political parties, those who are making children, uh, those are making manifestos because, you know, at this particular uh, time, uh, most of the political parties, most of the elections in India are being uh, uh, treated as issue-based elections. Issues are given priority and on that basis they are making their manifestos, they are making their commitments. So. Uh, in this whole lot of process, you'll find uh, children are missing in their manifestos, and mostly urban children. Like they'll talk about different children, like disabled children. They'll talk talk about uh, you know uh, children in rural areas, but urban children are missing in the whole lot of scenario of uh, political process. So when any of the elected party, any of the uh, you know uh, candidate who is filing nomination, uh, they least bother for children. They are going to the women uh, society. They are going uh, for the oldest people. They are going uh, to any 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 kind of person, uh, those who can vote. But they are ignoring children at a larger audience. Anand, you so, brought up uh, the, you brought up this idea of urban slums and rural slums because for a lame duck like me, I stop at a word called slum. I don't cross beyond that. But you are bringing out uh, something called urban slums. And when you talk about urban slum, there should be something called rural slum. What is this urban slum, uh, Anand? How, how, how does it vary from the usual rural uh, arena that we talk about? Uh, normally, the you know the concept of slum is very much urban because you know in rural areas you, you hardly find any slum. Uh, and as you know, for the you know uh, for for a better living, for having uh, higher incomes, there has been migration inside India from cities, from rural areas to urban cities there has been constant migration. So people are moving towards cities uh, to opt for better options because in rural areas, uh, as uh, they are deviating from agriculture, they are you know, more interested in some something, you know, something concrete, like they can earn on day-to-day -day basis. And the uh, rural sector is uh, having less priority in our country. So that's why people are moving towards urban setups, uh, to cities, and that's how uh, the urban slums, like, as you know, uh, the, we have limited space in urban areas. And people, every day, the lakhs of people are, you know, entering in any city. So that's how uh, they are building slums. It, you can say, uh, you know, uh, slum concept is mostly in urban areas. Okay? You'll hardly find any slum in rural areas. There are slums, but mostly in urban areas. Right. Slum is an urban phenomenon. Right. And, and you can say, you know, then every urban citizen, the people who are living in slums, they're the slight change. You, you, you start from your uh, housemate, you'll, uh, from the person who is uh, doing your uh, uh, milk wallas to paper wallas to auto drivers, everyone is from an urban slum. So mm. they are the life sign. Interesting. So they're part and parcel of our life cycle on a daily basis. And, yes, yes. And Anand, you, you brought yeah. up this point. Yeah, I, I, I get your point. So you brought up also one interesting thing. Children cannot vote. And in living in a nation of core vote bank politics, right? And do children form a vote yes. bank? It doesn't really. Funny, but it's right. Children don't form a vote bank. And they don't, uh, you care for the world, you care for women, you care for all these sort of minority groups. You have, you have all these sort of vote banks that these guys have segregated into and then operating on that as far as politics is concerned. But... And children cannot vote, and if one does not vote, do these politicians or these lawmakers or politics or political groups really worry about them? Did, did we see any sort of policies designed by any of these political parties till date, Anand? Uh, see, uh, in, our in, our setup, in, our, in our government setup, we have different departments like uh, uh, Women and Child Development Department, Family and Health Department, 
uh, uh, urban development department. So uh, all these departments they do they need children. Like uh, in uh, the ICDF uh, team, it's come under urban and uh, uh, sorry uh, WCD department, women and child development department. So there are different policies, and under these policies there are provisions for children. So uh, what these politicians do, uh, or the, or the, all the political parties, or the policy makers, they normally include children in these policies, under these policies. Like uh, in, suppose in WCD, we have a budget of some million uh, rupees, and we have something for children. So uh, in this in this of the whole scenario, there should be... Anand, hi, I think uh, we got disconnected there. So yeah. let, let me come back on that question once again. So the, the question was about, do these politicians or policymakers really care about these children? Are their policies designed? And you mentioned that, you know, in all this uh, child welfare and also uh, sanitation and all of these various different sectors, the children becomes an integral part of it, ob quite obviously. That's what you're mentioning. But little, yeah. you're broadening yeah. up a little bit on that. Can you, but, can you go over that once again, please? Uh, this is basically something on paper, but when it comes to implementation, it's, they hardly care about children. Like I'll tell you something, I'll give you some examples. Like I have, I have traveled in five, six Indian cities, more than 200 slums. So what I have seen in Hyderabad, I just want to share with the audience, uh, uh, the listeners. Sure. Uh, in Hyderabad, uh, I was visiting one Chandra Babu Naidu slum. So uh, what I found like, uh, uh, there are buildings of you know, uh, 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 six-story, seven-story buildings which are built uh, by the government for the urban slums. So suppose one kid, like I have seen it, one mm -hmm. kid is he's staying, uh, uh, a kid of five, six years, he's staying uh, on the sixth floor. Right? Okay. And as you know, in most of these slums, uh, we don't get 24-hour water. And mm -hmm. in urban phenomenon, normally slum dwellers, they call it as time water because they get water in a particular time for one hour, two hour in the morning, like seven to eight, eight to nine or ten, nine to ten. So they have a time slot in which they used to get water, right? Right. And in most of the slums, both the parents, they work. They work as daily laborers. They work, uh, they work in different informal setups. So they leave their houses early morning, maybe six, seven, eight. They have to leave the houses for the uh, living, for their work, for their job, whatever it may be, both the parents. So who is left? The children, the kid. Right. He's left at the house and he has to face the water. Right? right. So he, the particular kid, a six years kid, he has to come down uh, crossing five, uh, five uh, floors like he's coming from the sixth floor. He has to come down, he has to face the water, and he has to face lots of problems because, you know, at the water source, there will be huge line, there will be elders, and they will not allow a child to, you know, get, the, uh, get water uh, instantly. So he has to wait, and in this process, he loses many things. First, he loses his own strength, uh, he gets weaker. Second, he misses school. Right. And it has been seen like most of the children, they can go to school because of some works like this. They have to face the water. They have to, uh, you know, take care of the uh, uh, elder ones, uh, younger ones. They have to take care of the uh, elderly mother and anything. So these things happen. And we normally talk about right to education, um, uh, complementary right to, uh, like, uh, all children should go to school, but these issues we are not targeting. So uh, this is something that is, uh, you know, uh, that comes to the implementation part. Our policymakers, they do make plans, but when it comes to implementation, they, you know, they forget uh, how this can be child-friendly. And mostly we are demanding in our manifest, we have mentioned we want infrastructure, but it should be child -friendly. Friends, NRS Summer is a non-profit independent alternate media from Los Angeles, USA, which brings positive stories from grassroots activists from all corners of India and across the world. If you have any interesting episode you would like NRI Samai to cover, we will be happy to do so. NRI Samai would also like to encourage amateur journalists who have a flair for highlighting current events. You can be part of our citizen journalist team. You could cover an important event. 
interview victims of an atrocity or document an inspirational story. The idea is to have a mix of experience throughout all parts of the world, preferably supported by an audio or a video clip of your story to be aired, which will be the curtain raiser. You can also submit your opinion articles on important topics to NRSMA. We will be happy to put it on nrsmi.com in the opinion section. All your work will be credited only to you. And if you're interested, please send an email to nrsmi at gmail.com. Hmm. Interesting. It be accessible to children. Right, right. And uh, Anand, the question that comes to anybody's mind is, who's listening to the show, is, did any political parties buy this idea of child manifesto? Let's talk about, uh, if unless you're primarily focused in the uh, Orissa state, uh, can this manifesto be taken national and dealt with Congress party or BJP or the Ahmadi party that we're seeing, the recent rise of that party? So what parties did you reach out to? And are these parties buying this idea of children manifesto? Even before we go into the details of children manifesto, I want to know this. Okay. Okay. Uh... Normally, we operate in different cities, major cities where like, uh, the campaign focuses on two major Indian policies, that is uh, Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission and Rajiv Awas Yojana. So these two policies are meant for urban development, and we want these two policies to be child-friendly. So we are demanding on that note. Okay. Right. And the second is, uh, initially we had tried to have children manifesto in different parts of the country, like different cities, maybe Delhi, Mumbai, uh, Bangalore, Bhubaneswar, uh, but finally we could make it in Bhubaneswar only. So, but there were representatives from different national parties like BJP representative, so, uh, state spokesperson, he was there. Uh, there are someone uh, from the senior level from Congress was there, the state convener of Amadmi Party, he was there. There are other CPI and CPIM uh, uh, state leaders were there. There are local uh, the BJD party member, they were also there in, in a children manifesto meeting. And we submitted the manifesto, not we, but rather the children. But uh, you're talking about the national perspective, I'll tell you something on this note. Uh, when all these parties, they released uh, their manifestos, I analyzed all the manifestos, like I analyzed the manifesto of BJP, Congress, Amadmi Party, and others as well. And I found they are very, you know, superficial in mentioning about children. Uh, it is surprising. Uh, it is, it is again surprising for me uh, when I uh, look at the BJP manifesto. Um, as you know, there is Modi Hawa, Modi Apki Bar, Modi Sakar everywhere. Right. Uh, and and you'll find in BJP's manifesto on the front page they have mentioned about plays, like what they will do in next five years. They have a plays. And they have talked about women, they have talked about men, they have talked about elderly people, they have talked about everyone, and, but there is no mention about children in the, in the plays. Huh. Okay. And in other uh, uh, manifestos, like in Congress manifestos, in Ahmadi uh, Party's manifestos, yes, they have mentioned about children, they have mentioned about eradicating child labor, they have mentioned about giving mal uh, like uh, strengthening the ICDS schemes, which is meant for early childhood and children. But there is like the m missing part is they are missing, uh, you know, the urban children and the need for their need uh, in terms of living condition. Because you are, if you're talking about housing, if you're talking about uh, electricity, if you're talking about transportation, if you're talking about water, it should be child friendly. The, the house is made uh, for the urban slums because, you know, in RAY, the scheme which is providing the housing uh, for the urban setup, urban people, this is uh, a house of 300 square foot. So in a uh, in a in a house of 300 square foot, it's very difficult for a child to grow. Uh, he, his requirements are more. So uh, these concrete things are missing in all the political manifestos, the parties they have released. Uh, they have superficially mentioned about children. Yes, they have mentioned about children, but superficially, uh, just for the sake of mentioning. But they have not done anything concrete because in other uh, uh, points they have elaboratedly spoken about what changes they want to bring. But uh, in terms of children, all these are missing. Right. And I have, I was in recent conversation with uh, Mera Tai, Mera Patkar, 
on uh, NRS on my radio, yes. and she was mentioning about involving people in the policy making process. And uh, she is, uh, she is uh, in her constituency. There's a huge slum, and she was talking about the Rajiv Awas yes. Yojana yes, and other things. Did you, uh, by any chance, reach out to uh, Medatai and then talk about this? And, and specifically because uh-huh. I'm bringing Medatai because there is a largest slum out there. And the distinction between yes, the middle yes. class and the slum is, is pretty uh, distinctly evident there. So what's, any, any thoughts yes. on reaching out to uh, this, this largest uh, slum? Yes. Uh, we have our campaigner in Mumbai and we had tried. And, but uh, just because of the uh, election and she was too busy, we could not reach out to Meda Patkar. But yes, uh, on, on the note she had spoken about RAY, I, I just want to add on something. Like recently, there was different television arts by Congress, by uh, uh, in TV, you know, to promote. So they had one TV ad where the one kid is talking about RAY, Rajiv Awas Josana. Mm-hmm. But surprisingly, you will see the RAY document, there is mention about uh, partic- child participation. Like uh, in RAY to get the houses, that, like to build the houses, that should be DPR, that should be uh, DPR detailed project report, that should be proper study. And in these studies, children are meant to be uh, have participation, they should have been, uh, a, uh, you know, beneficiary, they should have a say. So it is mentioned in the RAI document, but in actual practice, it is not being done. Right. And right. most of the slums, they don't have any playground, they don't have, uh, you know, uh, child class or uh, any recreation center. Uh, if there are recreation centers, children are not allowed. So, uh, we want RAY, but we want RAY in a better uh, form. They, there should be child participation. Children should have a say. And and just don't ignore that uh, children can't do anything because they are much aware of the fact, like, why they have been, you know, uh, facing problems. They are much aware of the fact that we are living in Islam and I want a better uh, neighborhood. They don't want to live in Islam. They, rather, they want a be- better neighborhood. Exactly. So the so question that brings up is... Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. yes. So the question that brings yes. up here is, do children or the, are these kids that we're talking about, the rural slum kids, the, do they have clear thoughts on what they want from their elected leaders? What, what's your thought on that? Yes. Um, how we operate. Normally we operate with children. Like uh, we do advocacy at a policy level, we do advocacy at a media level, but again, uh, we try to empower uh, the children living in these slums. So we have created our child clubs in different cities. Like in Mumbai, we have 10, 15 child clubs in Jogeshwari area, in Kandivali. In uh, Hyderabad, we have uh, our presence in 10, 15 slums. We have our child clubs. In Odisha, in Barampur, uh, these cities, we have our child clubs. And through the child clubs, we try to empower the children to aware them about uh, their need, what they need, and you know uh, about the policies that poli- there are policies for them, but it is being underutilized or misutilized or not being utilized. So they know how to uh, what is the policies and how, where to harm. Them. So we are conducting meet the mayor program where you know they go to meet the mayor, uh, they converse with the mayor, they uh, discuss their issues, their problems. And in Odisha, we have seen that these children have brought a massive change. Right now, the, the Bhumeshwar Municipal Corporation is there. They are doing the, all the cleaning of garbage and all. And in any of the slum, if the municipal BMC officials or municipal workers, they don't come, these children, they directly call to the mayor. That your people have not come and still we are facing the, uh, the garbage in our slum. So these children are empowered. Recently something happened like, you know, uh, one incident happened in Islam. Uh, one particular uh, seven years old girl was raped and being murdered. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And these children, they went to the commissioner, the police commissioner, again to the municipal commissioner. They demanded for streetlights because that slum was completely uh, dark and just because that it, the, uh, the incident happened, so they demanded for street lights, and within two months, there is now street lights, and you know, the condition is better. Ah, okay. So they know how to uh, go with the demand. They know what to say. They know what is their need, and they know what is what are the provisions they have. Ah, so 
we are trying to you know empower the children this is us like if we, if we go and talk about the issue it it will hardly matter because there are number of ngos there are number of campaigns there are number of people who are talking about it but if the children those who are facing it on day to day basis they are going and they are saying the demand so it it matters so when you talk about demands right what are the charter of demands for political parties that you have put in if you can summarize little bit of course you talked about Raj, rajiv avas yojana and other things but if you can little bit summarize on what are the charter of demands for political parties that your campaign has put forward yes uh no uh, i'll just want to give you some uh, you know some insight uh, of the urban scenario in india please uh from that you can uh, guess what uh, what we basically what we need uh we have analyzed the 2011 census and thanks to the government for the first time 2011 they have considered slums and they have done a very intensive study intensive census on the indian slums so uh, 2011 slums uh, states that 49.6% of the total uh, you know uh, uh, population total households like 48% they don't have bathing facility they don't they don't 8.5 lakh like uh, 50% people they do uh, defecate in open in india it's a massive you know it's a major issue in uh, right now that like fit more than 50% people open, defecate openly and in urban area again very sad because you know most of the women most of the uh, girl child they have to wait for the evening they go for uh, they go to uh, defecate in the open either before sunrise or after the sunset mm-hmm. so this is there are some major issues so these are some issues so uh, we have our eight components like when we are talking about living condition to make a better living condition for the children uh, of india we have eight components so uh, uh, like in water there are is- uh, issues of water sanitation air power soil transport housing and public place so uh, uh, we demand for you know uh, uh, use of improved drinking water source availability of safe drinking water during the day location and distance of water source from the household uh, you know it should be significant it should have uh, been in, inside the community inside the slum there should be proper water source so that uh, the people the children they can fetch water without any difficulty so um, in water we want improved and uh, drinking water source and uh, a regular supply right safe drinking uh, water and regular water supply that's the first thing yeah yes um you talked about child labor uh, uh, anything want, about uh, child labor as well uh again child labor it is also due to uh, living conditions there are issues like you know most of these families most of these uh, child laborers uh, normally uh, they don't go to schools uh, uh, they don't have like it's not all about poverty it's all about you know their mom and they are living in so uh, most of the slums the children the, uh, though we are talk about uh, right to education but they hardly go to school there are issues like children are not going to school and you know latter part uh, they keep themselves engaging in different activities and the families they think the kid is not going to school and better to you know engage him or her with any of the work so in that uh, scenario if, if you can ensure uh, proper education you can ensure the proper education so that is something uh, that can you know lessen the uh child labor uh, thing so in our manifestos we, we demand we ensure that urban development schemes like ray and jnram are revised in the best interest of young children it should be revised because uh, right now there are uh, uh, they don't have proper uh, child friendly indicators impact indicators so we want this to be revised for for the best interest of young children and again we want to, we want to ensure that we have adequate access to safe clean water sanitation facilities clean and pollution free living environment access to electricity proper well ventilated housing because in most of the slums they have houses without a window and it adversely affect uh, the children the children should have space for recreation 
so that they you know they will not grow uh, up in distress and unhealthy conditions so uh, this is something very interesting like in india we have uh, due to this open defecation children are you know uh, becoming stunted so this is a you know, scientific document that has proved that uh, stunting in most of the indian children those who are living in slum they are stunted so we want proper sanitation maybe uh, community toilets there should be proper community toilets in each of the communities there should be proper safe drinking uh, water uh, sources in the community there should be proper electricity because in major slums uh, due to improper electricity and unsafe electricity Mm. there has been instances of fire there has been instances of uh, other uh, hazardous incidents so we want a proper and safe electricity wonderful wonderful and uh, 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 we are if you know uh, uh, there is increased government allocation and investment on our welding because uh, in normal setup all these policies like in sarkari that for both these policies there has been massive massive funding from um, idb and world bank but mm-hmm. when it comes to implementation we are more focused on urban infrastructure we are more focused on uh, building uh, monuments in the city to make the uh, to uh, make the city beautiful but we are ignoring the children we are ignoring the slum dwellers uh, we, we are ignoring the real need of the city so the city it should be inclusive and the children should get priority in uh in the cities and one more thing uh we like to you know the, most of the cities indian cities they are prone to different calamities natural calamities be it a uh, cyclone be it uh, earthquake be it flood there uh, there are incidents like in uttarakhand we have seen in barampur recently the flooding had happened uh, there are instances so whenever the government is building houses we want the houses to be disaster resistant Uh-huh. so these are some of the you know some of the uh, insiders of this our manifesto we want our manifesto should be more child friendly there should be mention about the children or right. on children there should be mention about their need and their aspirations right right now the curious question comes in again we are jumping back and forth from policy making to politics and because we have to tie this this entire piece together yes. wherein we involve uh, yes. uh, the conversation about political parties policy making children and all of this now uh, in your research going back for the past 5 10 years did you find any mp any mla taking up the cause of children their well being and specifically designing and framing laws that are directed towards children and especially if there is any mp or mla who's who's, who's put in some private bills in the parliament or in the assembly or in the vidhan sabha can you throw some light on that because i wanted to be, I, this is a curious case because i wanted to know yes, if yes, any yes. of the elected representative spoke about children in assembly and parliament i want to know about it. uh i have a list of mps those who raise issues of children in parliament like the last parliament like Please. we have been talking so i have a list of mps there are mps from congress there are mps from bjp there are mps from bjd there are mps from other regional parties there are mps from commun- communist parties and all so they have been raising issues different issues uh, on children in parliament like uh, issue of child labor issue of disability uh, you know issue of child marriage issue of child trafficking issue of child harassment issue of uh, issue of many things uh, related to children but we have constantly uh, seen like in urban setup the issue of children uh, is being ignored not exactly ignored but it is missing so uh, uh, like we have been tracking all the records all the questionnaires that has been uh, put in different uh, state assemblies and again in parliament and like the major questions they are on broader issues uh, but when we are going about the core issues like all this happens because of the living conditions because of the environment where they are living in so these issues are not being answered not being questioned and not being answered even uh, these policies like normally uh, there are questions on these two policies that we are targeting on this day no no mare way there are questions on these policies but not into the depth of uh, its in- implications on children and women in specific uh, like jenunaram they had a target uh, till 
2012 and 2013 and the target is not yet been fulfilled there are questions on that but it's not uh, it's on to the uh, the impact uh, the impl- uh, implementation part and the questions are on you know uh, the monetary part but not on the impact of genome how it has uh, um, succeeded in giving a better life the questions are not on that basis so our major major chunk of our questions are on very quantitative so there should be qualitative questions there should be questions that for can bring impact so uh, this year uh, after the election will be starting up a massive uh, campaigning with the policy makers with the mps in specific uh, to make them aware about the issue that this is something they should take care this is something that these mps should you know um, talk about in uh, different cities uh, dif- they represent different cities so they should talk about these issues in parliament so i can give a num- list of many mps those who are concerned those who are concerned for children and with due respect we adore them but sadly um, hardly few, hardly any questions they have put on urban children children uh-huh. living in slum and the betterment of the children so the urban. centrifugal force of your initiative is uh, urban slums and uh, what an initiative really anant and uh, brilliant work from your side and on, on that note i've uh, covered almost all the questions but we would keep this conversation open because uh, just before the elections there'll be a ton of people who will say that we'll imbibe all of this into the manifesto but after the elections you know the whole thing fades out that's the irony of our democracy that's been going on over and over and over in the past several years as you mentioned and uh, you know they cannot vote but they still know what they want from these elections you're saying that there are children who are becoming leaders you've got i've also heard about the uh, child leaders and also the child clubs initiatives that you guys have taken a brilliant work from your side and on that, on that note and thank you so much for joining on a very quick uh, call and uh, thank you for making it our show thank you thank you thank you anand and so friends as you have seen they can't vote but they still know what they want from from our political parties from the policy makers and the law makers and uh, this is the show about uh, children's manifesto and as always you know at an age where most children are uh, interested in the toys and gadgets these uh, kids and uh, from from these urban slums in various different parts of the country are dealing with real problems and they have clear thoughts on what they want from their elected leaders hopefully this children manifesto will be taken up by all these political parties and uh, the manifesto of demands put forth by these little ones and these young children would be taken up seriously and uh, the initiative by uh, our, our friend anand who has been mentioning about uh, how to take this forward anand has, uh, has always been the national communications officer for hamara bachpan initiative and uh, this is an organization he's been dealing with at uh, bhubaneswar and also hamara bachpan uh, campaign is spawned across pan india so thank you so much anand once again on that note uh, th- thank you friends thank you, for jo- thank you. Uh, fr- on that note friends thank you very much for joining the show today and as anand mentioned we have asked several questions on uh, what hamara bachpan's initiative is all about uh, and whether our political parties and the political leaders really care about children and their causes and what do the little children and young ones want from their political leaders as always children doesn't form the vote bank politics but uh, how important are they in this whole uh, democratic framework and we have asked several questions about the clear thoughts uh, on this particular initiative and once again uh, friends uh, you can listen to all nri samay shows at youtube.com forward slash nri samay facebook facebook.com forward slash nri samay twitter twitter.com forward slash nrsmi as always do uh, uh, reach out to us nrsmi@gmail.com questions comments feedback you like it you don't like it anything that you want to talk about about nrsmi you can write to us always on nrsmi@gmail.com we take each and every email seriously thank you very much and have a wonderful one bye